Awesome. Yeah, so I, I, I warned Jody to warn Jason that, that I didn't have time to record a video and probably will not help his attempt to stay on schedule. Because uh, as will become quickly apparent, I've been thinking about ecological forecasting education for a, a long time now. Um, so uh, I teach a course at BU called E585 Ecological Forecasting. The course number was selected by, among the available course numbers at the 500 level left in our department, which one had the best XKCD comic that seemed the most appropriate for the class. So that's that slide. Uh, I've now caught, taught this class as a semester course four times, starting all the way back in 2013. Uh, I've also done it as a short week-long course uh, four additional times, three face-to-face -face and one virtual, done it as a two-day workshop, and then have taught many of these concepts in additional short courses. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we've been working on this and working towards this for uh, quite a while now. So I, I'll be uh, unabashed about the fact that uh, the goal of my course as I've taught it, as I originally conceived it, was really focused on teaching people to make forecasts. And uh, you know, since you know, in, in the decade I've been doing this, some of those goals have evolved across FE to think about things that are, are about teaching teachers, teaching users, teaching students, uh, at the undergraduate level, I'm just completely honest that that was not the goal when I started this course. So that's the perspective. Uh, and, and much of my course was focused around uh, this idea of a semester long team based project of implementing a near term iterative forecast. Uh, that team based course uh, had a number of uh, milestones along the way. So we started with, you know, a, a, they came every week or two forming a team, writing down an initial model without even writing the code, uh, setting up your GitHub repository, pulling and visualizing your data on an iterative basis, historical model calibration, doing an initial ensemble forecast, reflecting on your teamwork skills, turning that into an iterative forecast, and then doing a final presentation. And I put in bold the ones that we do in the short course versions, uh, because we can't have to abbreviate that. Uh, and in reflecting on this for, for moving forward, uh, two things jump, have jumped out at me so far. One is that the iterative for turning things into an iterative forecast step is definitely the hardest part for all students, even with a strong scaffold throughout the semester. Uh, they, they still struggle to put the pieces together. They still struggle to automate that into a workflow and they still struggle with the differences in what the code looks like when it's a hands-on activity showing iterative forecasting as something that loops over a data set versus iterative forecasting when new data is arriving every day. That, you know, there's some changes in code structure that students seem to struggle with every single time. The other thing that I've noticed students struggle with is, is spending, in some sense, an excessive amount of time focused on the historical fit. I think that's kind of a legacy of the way we teach stats courses, being very focused on model fitting. And from my perspective, I've been I've always preferred students to be able to implement a simple model front to back all the way up to an iterative forecast, uh, it, it not really focusing on the complexity of the model. But at the same time, I've always been found some concern that, uh, that students had trouble translating from the idea of learning about simple time series model and then re realizing that all of this stuff applies to, to complex models as well. That, that, that at least I conceive of as my ecological forecasting course as not being a time series course at all, uh, but some students seem to perceive it that way. Uh, into, in terms of prior experience, I've tried to make the course accessible to those without a lot of background. So I, I kind of assume one stats or modeling course, some exposure to the ideas of ecological models in college level math and some previous experience with R. On the semester scale, I teach a mix of undergrads, masters, and PhD students. So I've had up to a third undergrads in the course successful, provided they had uh, a prior modeling course. And in the short course version, we teach this to grads, postdocs, and, and early career agency folks. And I've been happy that we've managed to include uh, about a, a quarter to a third agency practitioners uh, every round. And in fact, uh, I would say many of the folks on this 
in today's workshop have participated either as a student or as an instructor in that course. Um, in terms of the course organization, I when I do this as a semester course, I, a typical week involves a lecture, one day of lecture, one day of hands-on activities, and one day of discussion. Um, the hands-on activities are, have all been up on GitHub the entirety of existence of the course and are referenced in the book. Uh, these start with simple things like an R primer, thinking about how we translate from models to the forecasts, laying down the informatics and coding foundational skills, a primer on JAGs, and then learning about state space models, data fusion, how to partition uncertainty, learning about the Kalman filter and particle filter and kind of the core iterative forecasting algorithms model assessment and structured decision making. I will say the the, the hands-on activity that's been the biggest headache to me in all of this that needs the most improvement is the one on informatics. Uh, I will say that every, it's just the tools have changed so much over the decade since I started do, doing prep for this. And I also find that too many of them are platform specific and it's very hard to keep something working that works on Windows and Mac and Linux at the same time. Some of the best tools are, are Linux specific and Windows users struggle to find an, an equivalent. Uh, I would love to revamp the informatics and pair coding uh, activities to really focus on uh, actual code that sets up the, the workflow for a simple null forecast front to back before we dive into more complex statistical concepts and do that kind of as two labs and introduce pair coding and Git concepts at the same time. Right now, the pair coding and Git lab is doesn't really, it has code in it on phenology, but it doesn't really teach you about forecasting. Uh, the other place that I'd love to see changes is on our structured decision making, hands on activity. Um, we build a, con a contingency table with that. Students are great at building contingency tables for simple examples. But for some reason, they're really, at least the way I teach it, they struggle to understand the quantitative nature of identifying trade-offs among decisions. And they just kind of jump to the qualitative nature of, I've looked at the table and this is the one that seems best to me. And I can sometimes, students sometimes choose decisions that are objectively suboptimal because they stick, kind of skip the trade-off step. Uh, I'd also love to make the model assessment step uh, more forecast specific. It started very generic and over the years has evolved to being more and more for focused on evaluating forecasts specifically rather than model, uh, general model assessment, but there's still more to go. Uh, and also this dashed line is kind of the border between what we teach in the short course versus what we teach in the semester course. So I kind of take the first five as given that we do a JAGS tutorial uh, optional right before the short course. Uh, the short course also includes lectures on latent variables and hierarchical Bayes that I don't cover in the semester course because I cover that in my Bayesian course. I don't want to repeat that material. Uh, the discussion part is all student led. I always give them one paper. They also always have to find one other paper. Uh, kind of the setting, the first three kind of set some foundational concepts of open science, forecast ethics, expert elicitation. Then there's a whole chunk of case studies learning about what's the state of the science in different parts of ecology and then kind of finishing up with the decision side of things. Of these, the forecast ethics is the one that's the most recent addition that I would love to expand upon. I think I've, I've over the years become more and more convinced that this is a really essential part of teaching forecasting. Um, in terms of textbook, we use my textbook. Those are the chapters. I'm assuming at this point, everyone on this call has probably seen this already, <laughs> but it's there. Uh, the interesting side is that to realize that the the proposal for this actually went in in 2012. The book was submitted for review in 2015, and so it's getting a little aged at this point. There's things that I wish I had done differently. So if I had to do it again, I would definitely add a, a chapter on dynamic models. I, I took for granted too much familiarity with how dynamic models work. Uh, I would love to also expand the decision science section. It's one chapter now, it really should have been more than one chapter, particularly thinking about decision making under uncertainty and the social science aspects of ecological forecasting. Um, I also had a bunch of case study chapters that got dropped when I wrote it because I ran out of time. And I would love to add a third data simulation chapter 
uh, diving into more advanced topics uh, that I think we've learned about more in the decades since this was conceived. Um, so there's a lot of basic material in those first two chapters, but there's not really advanced stuff. Also worth noting that there are uh, two sets of videos about ecological forecasting that we pr produced in the course of running the short courses uh, in collaboration with folks at NEON. Uh, there's a Fundamentals of Ecological Forecasting uh, video series, 24 videos, each short, three to 10 minutes, kind of co covering a core concept each. And then there's the kind of lecture series videos, 12 each, they're kind of full lectures that go with the course material. Uh, and the last thing I want to point out, BU has this interesting hub uh, concept where that ensures students meet all of their educational objectives. And it's interesting that I got my course approved for teamwork, oral communication, ethical reasoning, not for quantitative uh, science or natural science or anything like that. Just the